With Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy and the Almighty Dragon Rulers right around the corner, the 2013 format was seeing tons of diversity. Mermail, Dino Fist, Tin Plate Gadgets, Windup, Insector, Synchro Infernity, Evil Swarm, Constellar, and many others were vying for top cut slots at numerous high level events. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Come on, just a little bit more. We're so close to hacking the Konami mainframe and changing the Master Duel ban list. Ha 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 ha! Foolish Simo, you will never be able to fix Master Duel thanks to NordVPN. NordVPN? NordVPN protects us from your feeble attempts to intercept our data as well as any desperate DDoS attacks you might launch our way. I was just trying to fix Master Duel's ban list so everyone can enjoy playing your game again. <laughs> Why would you even want to play Master Duel? With NordVPN, you have access to over 5,300 servers in 60 countries to stream all the TV, movie, and games you want. Master Duel should be the last thing on your mind. Well, since Master Duel's out of the question, where can I get this VPN? Looks like I need a new hobby. But of course, just go to the link on screen or nordvpn.com slash Zemo to get a two-year plan with a huge discount and one additional month for free. Hey, wait! Wait a minute, why is your name in the link? Haha, -ha, my plan worked all along. Now I'll get all the commission. Curse you, Simo! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> We're finally out of the shirt of shame, and all it took was Alex playing the literal worst deck I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, we've put it off for long enough. This is going to be our last episode before Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy releases. We'll focus on an event that happened a mere six days before the pack dropped, YCS Meadowlands, New Jersey, and what better way to ring out this period in Yu-Gi-Oh than with a Clash of the Titans. Alex is going to be playing the conventionally understood to be best deck, Mermail with all the fixins, and I'll be playing this. Infernity. Now, the May 11th, 2013 YCS in Meadowlands, New Jersey was interesting for a couple of reasons. Chief among them was Hidden Arsenal 7's legality. This set, which contained updates to existing Hidden Arsenal archetypes, released one card meant to be Laval support that was busted out the ass. You may already know what I'm about to talk about, but Laval Chain debuted in this set. This generic rank 4 allows you to send a card from your deck to your graveyard or choose a monster from your deck and put it on top of your deck. Both of those effects mesh absolutely absolutely wonderfully with Infernity. And as a result, despite the conventional wisdom that Atlantean was the best thing you could be playing during this period, Infernity was poised to give it a run for its money at this event alone. At YCS Meadowlands, a ton of storied players, including Patrick Hoban, brought this deck to an impressive finish, but the top performing player was Satoshi Kato with this list. Now you may be scratching your head. The last time we saw Infernity, it was a synchro-oriented combo deck that would end on monsters like Infernity Doom Dragon to ensure you always always had a high attack monster that would resist battle to always keep your infernity barrier online. And let me be clear, this was still arguably the play. In fact, Hoban's list is playing three or four synchros, including Stygian Sergeants, Infernity Doom Dragon, and Void Ogre Dragon, a card that's a negate as long as you are hellbent, a natural fit for this archetype. But Satoshi's list is more interesting to me because it foregoes tuners entirely, just playing the powerful Xyz monsters that this format would soon be known for. It uses cards like Stygian Street Patrol in order to get monsters out of your hand, Summoner Monk to always access powerful playmakers like Armageddon Knight and Dark Greffer, and as a result is much more consistent and does not have to play terrible, awful bricks like Infernity Avenger. One additional reason I wanted to focus on this list in particular is it, more than any of the other Infernity lists, reflects a modern understanding of deck building. It understands that the only things that really threatened this deck were Bricking, for which it is playing consistency boosting cards like Upstart Goblin, a card that was popularized by Hoban during this time, and back row, for which it is playing three Night Beam Main alongside three Mystic Space Typhoon and a Heavy Storm. This all or nothing approach gives it an edge over decks that uh, kind of forewent some consistency or explosivity in favor of uh, some cards that equalize in gummy board states. As a result, it is extremely powerful and extremely hard to stop. So with that, let's get into the card by card. 
Two Armageddon Knight and one Dark Greffer for obvious reasons. Three copies of Infernity Archfiend. This card is of course very powerful, but gets a lot better if you already have everything you need in rotation. At that point, you can use a rank 4 like Laval Chain to put it on top of your deck, ensuring you get its impressively powerful benefit if you top deck it the next turn. Infernity Necromancer at 3 as well, followed by two Stygian Street Patrol. This is usually a dump off of Laval Chain, and it is really strong. You can banish this from your graveyard in order to summon a Fiend monster with 2,000 or less attack from your hand, including uh, Archfiend, and additionally, you can reborn it with something like a Leviar later down the line. We've got two Summoner Monk. This can get not only Archfiend, but also Dark Greffer to unclog your hand, or Armageddon Knight if you need to put stuff in your graveyard. We're playing a Foolish, followed by a Heavy Storm, the one Infernity Launcher we are allowed to have, two Instant Fusion, one Monster Reborn, three MST, three Mystical Space Typhoon, one Duality. There is either going to be a turn of setup where you just set a bunch of cards and prepare for your next turn, or there will be a turn where you have to close out the game after you have already done your combo. In either of those scenarios, duality is fine. We've got one Rota and double Upstart Goblin, followed by double Bottomless, a Call of the Haunted, two Barrier, two Break, two Mirror Force, a Solemn Judgment, and a Solemn Warning. Mirror Force, of course, gets a lot better if you actually have to protect your Infernity Archfiend to keep your Barrier online. In the side, we've got a copy of DD Warrior Lady, a Matayon the Time Lord, one Tour Guide from the Underworld, a Dark Hole, a Compulsory Evacuation Device, Triple Debunk, double Malev, one Needle Ceiling, double Prideful Roar, the combat trick that beats all others, and two Soul Drain. In the extra, we have Darkfire Dragon, the IF target for fours, Fusionist, the IF target for threes, Abyss Dweller, Diamond Direwolf, Gagaga Ga Cowboy, Gem Knight Pearl, double Laval Chain, double Levier the Sea Dragon, this is far and away your most powerful three, My Stroke the Symphony Jin, Shockmaster of course, one copy of Black Ship of Corn, and one Zen Mains. It's not hard to see why this deck was so powerful. In a format where you're either playing monster combo or a rank four strategy that can end on Abyss Dweller or Shockmaster, it's refreshing to see a deck that can quite literally do both. I expect to do so in my game against Alex. Let's bring home another week out of the shirt. Damn. Isn't it glorious? This is like the zenith of 2013 deck building at its finest. 28 monsters. I mean, there's no question that Mermail was one of, if not the strongest decks for its time. And this is optimized to all hell. I know I've played Mermail several episodes of History of Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's so important just to chronicle the changes that this deck has experienced. Think about how this deck used to look when I played it in the first time around. And now it's undergone several iterations through some of the top players and look at what we are seeing it today. This is just clean, 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 clean. I'm so happy to be playing this for one last time. Honestly, the deck is probably not going to be good until Neptibus is released in like Breakers of Shadow, but even then it's not even like a competitively meta threat. It's more like rogue at best. So let's do the card by card one more time, ladies and gentlemen. So we have our Atlantean lineup of three Dragoons, two Heavy Infantry, and three Marksmen. This is sort of the golden ratio that all the Mermail decks start to follow, mainly because Heavy Infantry, popping face up cards isn't nearly as important as popping face downs with Marksmen. Marksmen also can deal out a lot of damage, where Heavy Infantry's extra summon isn't as reliable, and of course we want Dragoons to get all the searching power. We have three copies of Diva, of course, another Sea Serpent that we could extra normal summon off of this, but it's Diva. It enables a bunch of crazy plays. Two copies of Gun to get back all of our Mermails to be able to go into some crazy Xyz or Synchro plays, or just get some big dudes on the field. Lead is the biggest one of those, and hopefully we get to just smack Joseph with a 2700 lead. That'd be fantastic. Three Lind. Three Lind, I think, is actually something that changes over time. I think they start maybe going down to two copies of this, just because you only really want this with Sphere, but obviously you want your Spheres to always be live, and so if you can just keep summoning out Lind with Sphere, you're going to be in a good position. Triple Megalo, because it's like one of, if not the best Mermail. Then we have Triple Pike which is one of the best normal summons you have. Triple Teus, you want to see this as much as possible because this gets your whole deck online. One copy of Turge, this is actually a new inclusion, I believe, from Cosmo Blazer, and allows you to do what Pike does, except you get a card from your graveyard and add it to your hand instead of your deck. So, neat card, allows you to recycle some of your cards like Gund and the like. And then, of course, one Mulan Glacia to rip cards out of the opposing hand. Although, if we're playing up against Infernity, this is probably not the best idea. For the spells, we have Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, Reborn, Triple MST, Avarice. Salvage is nice to get back some of our Atlanteans or our smaller water monsters just to get a plus one there and triple copies of Abyss Sphere and one breakthrough skill for our trap lineup. Sphere obviously being the one to summon Lin, then Lin will destroy itself and then you're able to get any mermail you want. Either get a big dude like Leader Megalo or go into something like Pike or Turge to be able to recycle
recycle your resources, maybe pop some stuff with like Marksman and Heavy Infantry, and actually play quite a bit on the opponent's turn in one big set of chains. And then we have the Breakthrough skill as well. I like this card, a Cosmo Blazer, uh, one of the best cards from Cosmo Blazer, actually. And the nice thing about Breakthrough skill is that it's able to actually negate stuff like Abyss Dweller, which is very problematic for this deck to deal with, in addition to being able to negate an actual monster threat your opponent will have. For the extra, the Synchros, we have a Catastro, an Armory Armor, Black Rose, a Dulorin, a Gungnir, and a Scrap Dragon, and then the Xyz, we have Dweller. Bahamut Shark is something we haven't really seen, and you might be thinking this is strange because Totally Awesome hasn't been released yet, but you actually went into Mermail Abyss Trite. I think this card was also released in Cosmo Blazer. This is a neat little combo just to give you a decent amount of advantage. Bahamut Shark's 2600, and Trite is 2800 defense, so these two actually are a reasonable combo to go into if you have some level 4 stuck on the field. You also have some other options here like Double Abyss Gaios, Gachi Gachi Gentetsu, a Big Eye, a Leviathan Dragon, and a Wind Up Zen Main. Zen for the side deck, Gores, Triple Maxi, Double Snowman Eater, and Tragodia. Double Messenger of Peace, I can see why this is pretty good, just to buy you time to be able to actually get to your combo. And then you have Breakthrough Skill, three Dust Tornado, and two Mind Crush rounding out the side deck. I think overall, this is as clean as it gets. There's a reason that this deck got first place at YCS Metal Lens back in May 2013, and I can't wait to bring this to today's duel. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. Mermail's last hurrah. Let's see if we can clinch it out. It's time to do it. Damn, Joseph, I was trying to get the clean sweep in uh, history since it seems like 2013 has been my format, but after the absolutely appalling performance I put on last episode with Constellar, uh, I'm rightfully back in the shirt, but it's okay because I'm undefeated with Mermail, so you're dead this episode. <laughs> you are legitimately 2 or 3 0 with this deck, right? Yep. Oh, God. Well, I am not looking forward to facing its final form, though I am doing so with a very interesting list. Uh, this deck would, after having died in 2010, come back now with the advent of Xyz, and then again uh, in mid-2014. So even if I lose here, there's another shot for Infernities. That's true. There's another shot for Mermail when Neptibus comes out. <laughs> when uh, What is it? Breakers of Shadow, I think? And... Uh, it's obviously not nearly like as good at that point, but uh, this is probably Mermail's last hurrah for the foreseeable future before uh, we're just dead and we have to play Dragon Rulers for the next 10 months. I'm ready though, buddy. Let's get into it. Let's shout out the patron, Matthew Mulherm. Thank you for the support. Do you have the hand up, buddy? I do. I'm going to go with, let's see, you're on Synchro Inferno. I'm going to go with Even. It is Even. I picked four, the greatest rank to ever exist. I wonder why that could be. I guess if you don't know, you're going to find out. Well, I'm going to go first. Uh, I got to hope that I can do something here to stop me from getting completely slaughtered. And this hand doesn't look too bad. Good luck, buddy. I'll go ahead and draw for turn. Yep. And well, sadly, I don't get to have an explosive opening. But in all fairness, I don't think Mermail really ever did have explosive openings. Uh, all that often, at least. Uh, I'll just set a few and just throw it to you. Well, this is the hand. Let's see if we can make it okay. work. Okay. We're going to begin with Night Beam. Ugh. Well, you hit my MST. All right. And another Night Beam. <laughs> it's kind of heavy uh, you storm. Hit my, you hit my Abyss Sphere. Congratulations. Wait, that's crazy. Oh, that's <laughs> better than Heavy Storm. All right. Uh, let's go Rhoda. Okay. Uh, I'm going to grab Dark Greffer. Sure. I'm on a normal Dark Greffer. I will activate the effect, pitching an Infernity Necromancer. Okay, here we go. Uh, we are going to send an Infernity Archfiend to the graveyard. The boy has been sent. All right, uh, we drew the lawn chair. Excellent. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to fire it, targeting the Archfiend and the Necromancer. Uh, no response to that. All right. Nice you uh, hit that MST with your Night Beam. That would have been a disaster for you. You would think so, right? <laughs> I'm going to go for the uh, Archfiend effect here. All right, we're going to grab Infernity Barrier, I believe. There it is. Uh, we're going to overlay Infernity Archfiend and Dark Greffer. All right, let's go Abyss Dweller. The Nightmare is here. Set one, we'll go Abyss Dweller, uh, detach Infernity Archfiend. Uh, then we will trigger Infernity Necromancer, targeting Archfiend. Bring him on out. All right, we'll trigger Archfiend here. I'm just staring at this list like, boy, if I had three launcher, you would be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to grab another copy of Barrier. Okay. Top card of my deck was Archfiend, by the way. What the heck? Excellent. Uh, maybe there was a way I could have done this to get a Stygian Street Patrol in my life and maybe made things a little better, but I don't know. I still think you're sitting pretty. I'm sitting okay. We're going to go Instant Fusion here. Oh, God. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we're going to grab Fusionist. 
And as much First as, time we've seen this card in history. As much as I want to make a four, I do need that Archfiend in attack position if I want to actually fire off those barriers. So we will just go wind up Zen mains here. Seems pretty good. Uh, combat? Sure. Uh, let's go Archfiend into the set card. Had to make the fucking Dweller. Yep. <sighs> All right. 17-15, uh, but in the way that doesn't lose to Gores. Sure. 32. All right. Back to you. All right. Uh, we're dead. I'll draw. Okay. So Barrier is an Omni Negate that is not a once per turn, correct? Correct. Well, this was a fun time. Interestingly enough... There is a chance I can survive a turn. It depends heavily on what you draw, but there is a chance. Yeah, there isn't really a clean way to do this. So, okay, we'll heavy. We'll get one barrier out of the way. Uh, yes, unfortunately, I do have to barrier here. Okay. For my next trick, I will set and I will pass and pray. Archfiend off the top. Let's go. Mm. Did not do it. Oh, thank God. All right, we'll, we'll Dweller here. Yep. Oh, this is so crappy. I hate the proactive Dweller. Uh, let's just walk in. It was heavy infantry. <laughs> well, uh, 15, 17. I'm not dead. That's what I said. Second main. <laughs> I have a chance. Set one, back to you. Okay, if that's another barrier, I'm probably dead. But let's see what we draw. Fascinating. So I'm going to get barriered for my life no matter what I do. Uh, declare Teus pitch lead. Lead. Does this do something? Uh, lead doesn't do anything when he's discarded, but Teus, uh, will special himself and then will add me a monster. I probably can't let you do that. Yeah, we'll go, uh, we'll go barrier. He's also 2400 defense, which I was hoping that maybe I could get through, but, uh, I've got a back row. Go ahead. All right. Uh, stand by. I'll <laughs> spike the MST. <laughs> it's sphere. Okay. So uh, we're still in it. We're still fighting. We're so we'll get Lind. Okay. Um, MST. Thinking here. Lind does what? Specials a mermail? Jesus. Correct. All right. Yep. All right. We're fighting. We're fighting for our fucking life here. Uh, let's see. What do I have in grave? I have a bunch of dudes. Well, I have no hand, so I can't get any value off of this. I think, God, I wish I had lead still in deck. That would have been like the best thing I could have had. I think the move is to just play a Megalo and then like you just have to kill it and then it at least buys me a turn, but I don't think that's going to be good enough, but okay. Um, All right, it is, it is not going to be Actually, good let's go ahead and bottomless here. Oh, okay. Well, I was thinking I could have actually gotten uh, Teus in defense and you wouldn't have been able to Zen Mains crash, but you have bottomless, so I'm fucked anyway. All right, game one. Well, I'm surprised I lived that long, if I'm being honest. Uh, I thought I was going to die much faster. My hand was actually, like, fine, but your deck is just so explosive that I really just didn't get to have a, much of a chance to set up. I could have maybe done something. I had the Teus lead uh, from the onset, so, like, maybe I could have done that in addition to, like, setting Sphere Lin, but, like, I don't know. Like, I felt like that was a fine opening, but, eh, we'll see what happens. This is a weird draw for me. Okay, <laughs> this might be a quick game because I feel like if I was going second, this hand would be crazy, but I'm not going second. So let's try to do something about that. Normal diva. Yeah. Go ahead and grab diva. <laughs> yeah. I'll make gotchi. No shot, dog. Absolutely I will, not. I will set one and pass. <laughs> Go ahead. Stand by main. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with this hand. This seems so awful. But all right, buddy. Go ahead and rail me. Okay. I, I think I have a series of plays. Uh, let's go MST target the back row. If it's sphere, I'll, I swear to God. I wish it's breakthrough skill. That's still pretty good. Okay. Uh, let's go Armageddon Knight trigger the effect. It would have been better if I could have negated Armageddon Knight. That's fine. All right. I'm going to send uh, Stygian Street Patrol to the graveyard. Oh, and you're, to see this card you're boned now, buddy. I'm banishing the street patrol for Infernity Archfiend with no effect. <laughs> Excellent. That's fine. But it gives you two level fours. So. It does. So we're going to overlay here for Laval Chain. Okay. I will trigger the Laval Chain, detaching the Infernity Archfiend. Yeah, this card's fine. This card can come on, off the list, right? I, I swear to you, every... <laughs> you know I host the tournament where people uh, unban <laughs> yeah. cards. Every time people go, Joseph, why don't you bring Laval Chain off? You're all about to find out why I'm not going to bring Laval Chain off. Uh, let's set two here. Uh, okay, um, now we will activate Stygian Street Patrol. Sure. Uh, I'll special Infernity Necromancer. Yep. 
Uh, I will declare the effect. We'll bring back Archfiend and trigger the effect. Uh, we'll grab Lawn Chair. Lawn Chair is not even great here, right? I was going to say, not really. You don't really have much going on in the graveyard. Yeah, this is this is one of those hands. Do I just want barrier number two? Yeah. Or, I mean, uh, barrier number one, of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, ba barrier number one, I mean. <laughs> no, no, here, let's, let's go get let's go get break. It could be anything. <laughs> could quite literally be anything. Um, okay, let's let's set. You know, could be anything. And I guess you get to you get to have a shot at it. Okay. Uh, so you have break. You may or may not have I, barrier. again. Could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll draw. Uh, it's not bad. All right, main one. So barrier break. And then another card. It could be another barrier. could be another break. Uh, could be it's bottomless, a, which we saw judgment. last time. Okay. So now my hand's turned on, but now you have all this interruption, so it's not good. I'm going to normal pike. I will activate pike pitching infantry. Yeah, I'll, I'll just barrier here. Okay. So pike gets barriered. And then trigger infantry pop your chain. That's fine. Then I will set a card and throw it to you. End step, I think I might as well break the set card. Uh, yeah, there's not much I can do about that. So it is a sphere. Okay, thank God. Uh, yep. Draw for turn, stand by main. Sure. Well, shoot! At some point, I want to actually accomplish something here. Uh, I'll set one, put the Necromancer in defense. Would it kill you to kill one of my monsters um go ahead i mean i guess i could have put gachi to attack to kill necromancer but i don't even know if that's good <laughs> because then it makes the gachi a lot more vulnerable all right main one uh yikes hands not looking too hot if i'm being honest i can do that but that actually seems like a terrible idea i suppose i'll set one of my own throw it back stand by oh my god i did it you did not draw archfiend oh come on <laughs> Yeah, baby. Oh. You're simply too good at the game, Joseph. All right, get your search. Oh, okay, well, geez, what do I even get here? All right, I I'm going to grab a lawn chair. Uh, main one. Uh, how the hell am I outing Gachi Gachi Gantetsu? you telling me there's nothing in your extra deck that can out Gachi. I refuse to believe that. I'm hardly saying that. Well, that'll do it, yeah. I'll overlay these two Infernity Archfiends. Corn. I was going to say, Corn was pretty prevalent. Yep. Corn uh, effect will donk the guy it sends it doesn't destroy he's gone uh we will go necromancer target archfiend sure archfiend effect uh i haven't normaled i feel like i might as well get necromancer and just make a three to try and do it that way or i could get a four can i get archfiend with archfiend are you kidding me i can wow that is just not fair <laughs> ah, just, just silly oh my goodness okay we're gonna go uh necromancer here sure uh, we're going to normal the Necromancer. Uh, effect to change, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to overlay for Leviar. Ooh, okay. We're going to Leviar effect, bring back Stygian Street Patrol. Gives you a four. Uh, we'll go Patrol and Archfiend for... Jeez, uh, I don't know. Um, I think Laval Chain is the funniest, but Abyssal is probably the best. Can I kill you this turn? You're at 8,000. Where's your Gagaga -ga -ga Samurai? We'll just grab uh, Abyss Dweller if we're going to have to play another turn. Uh, Dweller effect... Uh, we'll go lawn chair. Got uh, a space for the launcher. Uh, that is, jeez, I wonder if that's just fine. I'm do, I'm Probably. Sure. I mean, I'm already dwellered, so I think I'm pretty much out of this game at this rate. <laughs> oh, might as well. Oh, okay. You know, just throw salt in the wood. You weren't lying about it being judgment. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I know. I would never lie about something like that. Uh, we'll bring back. Oh my Arch god. Archfiend and Necro. We'll trigger Archfiend. Sure. We'll grab. Sure. The other break. Here's the second one. Uh, combat. So this uh, is 36, 46, can't 53. Attack with the black ship, unfortunately. Yeah. So I just take 53 here. And then the thousand for black ship from earlier, I believe. Oh, I lose the thousand. Yeah, when he uh, sent the gachi. Correct. Sorry. Set one and uh, pass back to you. Uh, anything in standby, sir? Nah, you're good. Okay. Uh, main one. I'm so dead here. I, there's no, no fucking shot. Diva, activate. Uh, I'll barrier here. Yeah. All right. Congrats. Uh, not even close. My Woo! opening hand was marksman, gunned, diva, infantry, pike, 
and breakthrough skill. This and so I'm just like, I'm just like, weird. I have no idea what I'm supposed to start like when you have this opening hand. Like I was trying to find a way to get another four woven in because at least I could have done something with another four. But it's ugh, this yeah, was this, like just this not hand is good. Like, this hand is crazy if you also have a megalo in it, which you don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Let's uh, do the game three. Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like, th like I mean, Mermails had its tirade, but like this just felt embarrassing by comparison. I gotta get one game off of you. I have to get at least one. Like these these first two games that we showed, I feel like did not do a good job of uh, demonstrating how this goes. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe because you're playing this rank four spam deck that you just dwell or me and I just lose the game immediately. Maybe that was representative of how good Infernity was. I don't fucking know. All right, this hand looks slightly better. Uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. All right, good luck, buddy. I will tell I, you this, uh, my first two hands were unreal, like unbelievable hands. Uh, so I think you have a better shot with this one. <laughs> I'm gonna do this shit again, buddy. Yeah, Normal diva. Yeah, dude, gotcha it up, baby. I'm just gonna gotcha it up again. Like the way my hand looks, it's it's weird. All right, so gotcha set to pass. Let's see two, the two. double fucking night beam again. Uh, this hand's. Wow, this hand could go a lot of different ways. I'm gonna normal summoner monk, if that's okay. Uh, monk is fine. You have to change it to defense. Yep. Uh, I will pay cost for the effect to send. Pitching upstart. I'll break through skill this, sure. Uh, I'm gonna IF here. Sure. We'll get dark fire dragon. There he is. Okay, where are we going from here? I mean, corn is really funny. It's actual comedy. Laval chain, a fiend monster. I mean, Dweller is just so good against you. I do have breakthrough skill in the grave though. I think because of that, I'm gonna try. I. It feels so bad to pass up Laval chain. Understandably. I mean, that gets your whole deck online essentially. How much do I really care about Gachi? Not at all. We'll go uh, Laval chain. Uh, I'll trigger the effect. Go for it. Uh, we're gonna send an Archfiend. Uh, we are just gonna set one and pass it back to you. Uh, end phase sphere. Ooh, or before that's as phase, bad as it could have possibly been. Yep. All right, let's go for Lind. Uh, end phase now. Lind pops, sphere pops, trigger Lind. Don't have a fantastic hit here, sadly. I think I go for Pike here. Then trigger Pike. I'm gonna pitch this lead that apparently is glued to my hand. And let's grab ourselves a copy of Marksman. Sure. Uh, eh, I guess that's fine. Main one. Uh, let's try for pike number two. Uh, thinking here. Oh, you just pitch the marksman. I'll just, uh, solemn this. Makes sense. So you'll take your 2k. Pike goes. Does not get the effect because the summon was not able to stick. I can run over your lavavel chain because I'm at 2k. So I'll that's take pretty relevant. Here. Second main, I have a back row. Go ahead. Boy, that is not good. All right, stand by main. Stupid idiot card clogging up my hand. All right. <laughs> I'll yeah, set one, fine. and if you got an MST, I lose. Lawn chair effect. I do not have the lawn chair. All right, let's grab uh, Archfiend here. Uh, I'll trigger Archfiend. This is rough. Having to actually deal with a monster. Not where I want to be. <laughs> imagine, imagine. <laughs> if I get Necro, I can set up for next turn. Uh, if I get just like barrier on spec, I can make Laval put an Archfiend on top of my deck, daring you to kill me next turn. But without launcher in rotation, that's really low impact. I think I almost want to get Necromancer and just wait, like try and get you with a next turn. Let's try that. I'll okay. grab Necromancer. Uh, I'm going to overlay here. Uh, we will go corn. Going to take out the gachi? Uh, thinking, I'm trying to imagine a scenario in which the Abyss Pike is actually the pick. And I think that scenario is every single scenario. So I'll get the uh, Abyss Pike here. Okay. Uh, accidentally <laughs> was hovering over the gachi here. So let's fix this. Uh, Pike's gone. I'll take a stack. All right. Uh, well, uh, kill me now, buddy. I got the Necromancer in rotation. We'll try. Sphere. Oh, wow. That's... <laughs> That was your draw, or you didn't want to commit the two of them set? Okay. That's it fine. was my draw. Oh, I will let no. You know, oh, you could so. have lied to me. <laughs> I could have, yeah, yeah, but that's not fine. very fun. You were nice enough to tell me your set was Judgment, so that I'll tell fine. you that Sphere was the top deck. <laughs> All right. So I have Marksman in hand that you already know about, so I could just grab another Pike. Pike can take out the back row. The problem is I still need to, like, actually kill you. I can try. Yeah. All right. So let's grab my Pike if I can find him. Him. All right, good. This deck plays three. That's a relief. 
Uh, Trigger Pike, pitch this. Let's search infantry. No, we want marksman here, right? Yeah, we want marksman. Uh, marksman pop the set. It's a bottomless. It's a bottomless. All right, this sphere was gone long ago. All right, we'll draw. So I was. <laughs> Wait, sorry. You skipped the uh, the Lind summon here, right? Oh, sorry. Yes, I forgot to actually blow up a Lind. Yeah, that sort of matters. So, let's dump this. There we go. And let's actually put this on top because the deck would have been different. Uh, that's probably worse for you, in all honesty. But whatever. Uh, I think either card would have probably <laughs> killed you. So, all right. Uh, now we just have to find a way to kill you, and I think that's pretty easy. Uh, Teus pitch gunned. Yeah, that's, that's decent. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad, right? Sure. It's not bad. All right, so Teus, I will grab a copy of... Oh, uh, I don't even know. I sort of have everything I want at this point. I'm out of pikes. Level four or lower mermail. Do I even have any of those? Oh, I have Turge. Sure, I'll get Turge. Why not? Yeah, we can choke him off. Trigger gunned. I'll get lead. Uh, let's... Uh, I mean, this is like game here, right? This is how much? Six. Uh... 23... Uh, 33, 39, if I... Oh, these are all buffed, too. Yeah, this right. is game. There, there's no way that this isn't, yeah. Yep, that'll do it. Oh. Uh, the other card was Avarice, if it makes you feel any better. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel better at all. Oh, my gosh. Wow, Abyss Sphere. What okay. a card. This is, like, what I was hoping would at least be game one or two. It wasn't exactly how I envisioned it playing out. I didn't imagine Gachi turn one was going to be the move. This was at least more representative of the explosivity of this deck. And uh, to, in all fairness, I think your Night Beams and MSTs were really helping just shut down all the spheres, which really gave me the potential to pop off. And with my hands being, like, semi-bricked, because I didn't really have catalysts to get these cards out of my hand to really start getting my engine going. Uh, you were just able to freely do whatever you wanted and then back that up with the fact that you're a rank four Xyz deck that can just drop Dweller at a, you know, <laughs> at, this, at a moment's notice, then that's game uh, for me. And I can see why that that would be appealing for people to want to play a deck like Infernity uh, when Mermail is considered like one of the best decks, if not the best deck during this time. Yeah, um, this deck... I mean, it's really shocking to me uh, how unrepresented it is. Like, it's not until, like, uh, April, May that people start tinkering with this deck. And maybe that has to do with, like, release maps. You know, Laval Chain is a pretty integral part of this deck. Uh, just how much better this deck feels than all of the other Rank 4 strategies. Like, it has exceptionally easy lines to Shockmaster, like everything did, right? Every single one of these decks just as accessible. Um, the difference with Infernity is it has something that those decks don't, and that's offensive pressure. I mean, you saw in game two, when the turner, when the corner finally got turned, I mean, it, it really gets off to the races at a moment's notice. Yep. The only thing preventing OTKs being you have too many zones clogged by monsters. The deck is really unbelievably powerful. And what I like specifically about this build, uh, which was from the um, uh, Meadowlands, New Jersey YCS, uh, is that it really represents like what a, a modern deck would look like. Like the understanding yeah. that the things that are beating you is going to be back row. And so like, even though the cards ass, you have to be playing triple night beam main. I mean, that's the only reason I won the first game. Uh, you have to be willing to uh, shave down on like uh, barriers. It's only on two of them. Um, it's just all gas uh, as absolutely few monsters as you could possibly play because if you draw three of them you lose the game i mean in game yep. three i was saddled with a hand that had uh summoner monk plus dark greffer and i was just like well shoot i mean i lose right like yeah. that's yeah. one too many monsters um potentially i could have pitched the summoner monk for the dark greffer maybe that would have been the play um but it's easy to see why the meme of set your monsters in your spell trap was so prevalent uh that's really the <laughs> only huge weakness of this strategy it's unfortunate because the deck is really cool it has a lot of interesting lines stygian street patrol opens up so much for the strategy but it really was just a, a an exceptionally good deck for an exceptionally short period of time because I mean, what happens next just outclasses it in every single way. I think what I love about Infernity 2, it's really the first deck that plays off the sort of hellbent mechanic, right? Yep. Where you want to have no cards in hand. And I feel like there really hasn't been an archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh! that really wanted to do that up until this point. So even though we're in 2013, the fact that we're still seeing Konami developing new archetypes that still, even though they're combo decks, have their own unique way of doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think what's so scary about this deck in particular, especially compared to my deck, right? We're both playing combo decks, but 
the combos function in vastly different ways. You are able to play 10-ish plus trap cards because you have searchable ways to just stop me from being able to play the game right. and just interrupt me in addition to assembling your combo. My deck, by comparison, is like 30 monsters and I have like just nothing but all gas in the monster department. And so while you're trying to play as few monsters as possible, I'm trying to play as many monsters as possible. And so I love that even though they're both the same type of deck, they both execute what they're trying to do in different ways. And on that note, since we're talking about those combo decks, can I also just mention how Instant Fusion has just been like an all-star during this time oh, where wow. it just yeah. seems like it finally is getting its moment to shine, whether it's this deck, whether it's the Telecolor Curse, deck that we played in the uh, couple episodes ago. Uh, Instant Fusion, I feel like, is one of those cards that initially in its Cyberdark Impact release, everyone looked at it and was just like, I don't know why I'm ever going to care about this. But now I feel like it's starting to get to the point. And even now in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, Instant Fusion still sees play. And there's even Ready Fusion now if you want to keep going the distance. I just love that we get to see a card like this finally get uh, the slots it deserves. Literally in the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh right now in the year of our Lord 2022, um... Yeah, no, as soon as Synchros come out, people are like, oh, you can get extra stars with this. But as soon as Xyz come out, man, is this card kicked into high gear. Uh, it turns your yeah. rank four plays into Shockmaster plays, turns your bricks into Laval chain setups. It's just unbelievable. Uh, one other card that I'm glad people start experimenting with, and this is, uh, I would probably say the direct result of um, Patrick Hoban's like continued influence in the game, like this was the period during his rise, right? Is uh, Upstart Goblin being a yep. very common card. I'm playing two copies and boy, this thing is good. Just being able to play less cards, especially in Infernity, set things and then fire it off once like all of the bricks you don't want to draw are out of your deck, uh, ensures that you're going to find like a really high impact card. Um, the uh, incidental synergy with stuff like Summoner Monk, but honestly, just playing a 38-card deck is insane. And this is something that we'll start to see a lot more of later on, where decks were just always, not always, but most of the time, just 37 cards, because yep. three upstart goblin actually becomes staple for quite a reasonable amount of time in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Not this exact moment, but we're starting to see us get to that point. But before we get to that point, Joseph, we have... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we have a very fun time ahead of us for next episode. <laughs> yeah, we've stalled long enough. Um, we yeah. have pretty much exhausted everything interesting that was played up until May of 2013. And May of 2013 is interesting because at the national championship in France of that year, the first Dragon Ruler top is recorded. And uh, yep. there's going to be a lot more of those. <laughs> Lord of the Tachyon Galaxies release, Dragon Ruler gets his first top and it is far from its last. So for all you Dragon Ruler lovers and haters out there, strap yourselves in because, oh boy, it's Dragon Ruler time. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode. I hope you enjoyed. As always, let's shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout to Shout1317, Moto Cameron Smith, Tim Zuzer, X3, SJ Winchester, Chaotic Meeple, MBT Play Medolce, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man, Hoban, Synchro Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asin, 05, I Ship MBT and Simo, Draconic Rockslide, Jordan Coons, Iron Blazum, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, David Liu, Skyrose, Dylan Hunter, Cody Bretch, John Tubase, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Day Sir, Carlos CT, Flannel Daddy, Phoenix the Immortal, Einstein's Theory of MBT's Relative Toes, Hornet, Give Me Speedroid or Give Me Death, Jonah Messenger, TC gaming thanks for the sleeves dad matthew brady max mbt's ghost trick bmw tom russell why read cards when you can just click buttons helios 515 black acre thank you simo mbt gauge the rjb0 and ruxton 34 the entire state of indiana valen jackson justice for queen tira masu imagine committing a crime and finding out your lawyer is a yugi tubing rothschild mbt fans scare me more than covid simping for simo tyler h nicholas carpenter simo's harem of sexy yugi tubers nim noodle malaprinch of the burning tunnels mbt canceled by all community soon mike ty stella and zoe vermilion wonder waffles skull servant and the wandering doomed are boyfriends just an awesome name not reading cards makes the game interesting and you know it and the undertaker versus simo and mbt thank you guys so much for watching the video and we will see you next time